Okay, welcome everyone. Um, so I am Ansa, your helping hand, but um, and in this video we are going to be proving that the sum of n independent standard normals is a chi squared with n degrees of freedom. Um, there are some prereqs as always. Um, so the first one is that we are using the moment method of moment generating functions. So you just need to know what that means. Basically, if you have some random variable that's distributed with a particular distribution and you have another random variable that's distributed with another, I mean, sorry, with a separate um, distribution, then if you can show that m of a is equal to m of b t, then you have shown that the distribution zero is the same as distribution one. So that's just one of the prereqs. The other prereq you need, um, there's kind of two forms of it. So the first one is that if you have two or multiple independent random variables, this could be x, y, z, if these are independent, then this is the same thing as e of x multiplied by e of y. And um, this is true for any number of uh, random variables that are all independent. And a result that kind of follows on from that is that if you have, um, let's say, x1, x2, dot, 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 xn, um, and these are all iid iid random variables and they all have and they have some kind of uh, m and each of them have some kind of m g f of x i so this just say this just says that the rand uh, the moment generating function of any particular um random variable is m x i of t then the sum Right, so let's say s is the sum from i is 1 to n of x i, that the mgf of s of t is going to be the mgfs of x1 multiplied by mgf of x2 dot 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 mgf of xn all the way to the power of all, to, all the way to m x n. So basically, what's the, what this is saying is just that if you have the sum of independent um, and identically distributed random variables, that the moment generating of this moment generating function of the sum is equal to the product of the original moment generating functions. So you can also write this as m x i of t to the power of n. Right. Now, yeah, so that's basically most of the prereqs you need. Obviously, you also need the MGF of a chi squared. So if V is chi squared of N, then M of VT is equal to 1 minus 2T to the power of uh, minus N over 2. Um, and then the last prereq that you need, basically, is that if you have one particular random, one standard normal, so just one, so sorry, if you have one standard normal, zero, one, then uh, that standard normal squared, just the one of, just the one standard normal squared as a chi squared distribution with one degree of freedom. I have proof videos for this, they should be on the screen so you can go and watch them. But that just, yeah, that's just so that you know what the distribution of one normal squared is and then yeah you'll see what it basically is a very easy proof this proof because if you know that then you can use basically that oh sorry you can use that result and that result to basically prove this and that's what we're going to do but i'm going to kind of go through it step by step so what is the setup so let z1 z2 dot 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 all the way to zn be independent and identically distributed standard normal random variables and then let's define um let's say s 
to be equal to the sum of these from i to n of xi, we need to prove that s is distributed with some chi-squared random variable that has n degrees of freedom. So then, by the method of moment generating functions, this statement that s is chi-squared is equivalent to, so because the statements are equivalent, the proofs are equivalent, so this is equivalent to proving that ms of t is equal to mv of t for some v that's chi-squared with n degrees of freedom. Okay, so that's the basic setup. So now we can get into the proof. So if we do the right-hand side, the right-hand side is mv of t, which we said earlier, if v is this chi-squared with n degrees of freedom, this is 1 minus 2t to the power of negative n over 2. And then the left-hand side is the moment-generating function of s of t, which using the definition of moment-generating functions is the expectation of e to the t s. And then we need to remember what s is equal to, and that's just e of t to the sum, uh, t of the sum, right, from i to n of z squared i. So remember we're squaring i for s to get to s basically. Okay, so this is just going to be equal to e of e to the t z1 squared plus t z2 squared plus dot 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 plus t z n squared. Okay, and then using um, the properties of exponents a to the m plus n is the same thing as a to the m multiplied by a to the n. This is equivalent to saying e to the tz1 multiplied by e to the tz2 multiplied by dot 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 multiplied by e to the t, oh, these are all squared, sorry, um, e to the tzn squared. Okay, now we use the prereq um, that if we have functions of independent random variables, that if we, sorry, we're using the prereq that if we have a product of functions of independent random variables and we take the expectation, that's equal to the product of the expectation separately. So this would be e to the z1 squared multiplied by e of e to the z2 squared dot 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 um, e to the e t z n squared. Okay, so now what we need to recognize is that this particular, uh, you know, this little expression, actually this whole expression, that's just the expression for the moment generating function of z1 squared, evaluated at t, multiplied by the moment generating function of z2 squared, evaluated at t, dot dot dot, moment generating function of zn squared, evaluated at t. Okay. Now, these z1s, z2s, all the way up to zn, these are identically distributed, so they have the same MGF, and because I'm multiplying at n times, I can just take the moment generating function of zi squared to the power of t, and then raise it to the nth power. And then we use our final prereq, I think, hopefully, I explained earlier that if you have one um, standard normal squared, that that is a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom. So basically we're using the idea that chi-squared where z is normal, standard normal 0, 1, um, that, chi, that z squared is just a chi-squared with one degree of freedom. So therefore we know what the MGF of z is, which is 1 minus 2t to the power of minus 1 over 2. So then we can just plug this in because we do just have the moment generating function of a standard normal um, all squared. So that would be 1 minus 2t to the power of minus 1 half. And then all of that to the n. And then we use the other exponent law, which is a to the m all to the n is equal to a m to the n 
a to the mn, sorry. So this would be 1 minus 2t, let me zoom in, the power of, so we're just going to basically be multiplying these two things, so that's going to be minus n over 2, which if we take a look at our right hand side is what we were trying to prove. So this is equal to the right hand side, and therefore that implies that um, s being equal to the sum from i to 1 to n of, sorry, of standard normals is chi squared with n degrees of freedom. Okay, so that is the end of the proof. Please remember to like and subscribe, comment if you have any questions or requests, and then I will have a PDF at the bottom that has the proofs all typed out so you don't have to watch this video over and over again. Okay, cool beans. Bye.